Tonight at 10, we're in Downing Street, where Theresa May has decided to call it a day after failing to deliver Brexit. Earlier today, she emerged to announce the date of her resignation, expressing regret that she hadn't achieved her main goal. I do so with no ill will, but with enormous and enduring gratitude to have had the opportunity to serve the country I love. As she left to spend the weekend in her constituency, some colleagues expressed sympathy with her plight. The Prime Minister's put her heart and soul into trying to do the best for, for this country at a difficult time facing a challenging climate in Parliament. We'll be Good evening from Downing Street, where Theresa May announced earlier today that she will resign as Conservative leader in a fortnight's time after nearly three turbulent years in office. There should be a new Prime Minister in place by the end of July. Mrs May said that she'd done her best to deliver Brexit and it was a matter of deep regret that she had failed to do so. Mrs May will step down as party leader on the 7th of June but will stay on as Prime Minister until a successor is chosen. The race for the Conservative leadership will begin formally on the 10th of June, with Tory MPs selecting two candidates, with the winner being chosen by party members. The final result is expected by the end of July, with the successful candidate becoming Britain's new Prime Minister. Mrs May warned her successor that he or she would need to seek compromise in order to deliver Brexit. Our political editor Laura Kunzberg reports now on Theresa May's departure. It was time. Time to go to work, although the job has slipped away. Good morning, lovely weather. For confidants to choreograph the exit rather than plan the future. Time to confront the truth. A broken government, a broken leader. Time to forget distractions. The men in suits walk out. Then silence drops. As with every leader, it's lonely at the end. The cameras click just for them. Ever since I first stepped through the door behind me as Prime Minister, I have striven to make the United Kingdom a country that works not just for a privileged few, but for everyone, and to honour the result of the EU referendum. I negotiated the terms of our exit and a new relationship with our closest neighbours that protects jobs, our security and our union. I have done everything I can to convince MPs to back that deal. Sadly, I have not been able to do so. I tried three times. I believe it was right to persevere, even when the odds against success seemed high. But it is now clear to me that it is in the best interests of the country for a new Prime Minister to lead that effort. So I am today announcing that I will resign as leader of the Conservative and Unionist Party on Friday the 7th of June. Painful for her inner circle, after all the agony of trying to get Parliament on side, for someone else to try now. It will be for my successor to seek a way forward that honours the result of the referendum. To succeed, he or she will have to find consensus in Parliament where I have not. Such a consensus can only be reached if those on all sides of the debate are willing to compromise. But her efforts to deal first with her party, then Labour, came crashing down, with the country watching on this inscrutable leader, human after all. This country is a union, not just a family of four nations, but a union of people all of us. Whatever our background, the colour of our skin or who we love, we stand together and together we have a great future. Our politics may be under strain, but there is so much that is good about this country, so much to be proud of, so much to be optimistic about. I will shortly leave the job that it has been the honour of my life to hold. 
the second female Prime Minister, but certainly not the last. I do so with no ill will, but with enormous and enduring gratitude to have had the opportunity to serve the country I love. For so long, Theresa May fought and fought to hold on to her party, to hold on to her premiership. But that struggle is now exhausted. Her time in office nearly done. There's no immediate exit. She'll stay till a new leader is chosen by the Tory party at the end of July. But who? Coy for now? I find it moving, actually. I think that the, you know, the Prime Minister's put her heart and soul into trying to do the best for, for this country at a difficult time facing a challenging climate in Parliament. Um, and uh, I know that the Prime Minister has always striven to do what she believes is best for this country. The first Cabinet Minister in the race of rivals confirmed at a meeting in his constituency he'd run just a few hours later. Her passion was to deliver the referendum result, uh, the Brexit referendum result. Um, that will now be someone else's responsibility and whoever succeeds in doing that will know that uh, she laid the foundations. And no prizes for guessing who will also be one of a cast of maybe more than a dozen speaking at a conference in Switzerland today. I do not wish to elaborate now on, 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 the, on what we're going to do and how we're, how we're going to do it, but you will be, believe me, you will be hearing possibly more about that than you, than you necessarily want to hear. <laughs> but they all know Tory prime ministers often depart Downing Street because of Europe. It is a very big moment, a very sad moment, because she cared passionately about the job and about the country, and she wanted to serve the public just as I did. And when you come to that moment that you know your time is up, it's, it's extremely hard to take. Any of them would have to wrangle the same divided party. Eurosceptics ready to do almost anything to get their way. Politicians have to make sure their words and their deeds match. That's very important. So whose fault is this then? Her fault? Well, um, what, what wasn't it Harry Truman who had in his office the motto, the buck stops here? The buck always stops in Downing Street. It must do. Someone has to answer these climate change protesters' question. Where is the government? A question for all of us. Who will lead? There has to be another opportunity for the people of this country to decide who they want to be in their government, how they want the government to be run, what the long-term strategy is of that government. I think we need a general election. Our politics problems, though, won't disappear just with a new Tory leader. I'm not sure her departure changes the fundamentals of Brexit. Brexit is an utter mess, and it looks to me like the only way to resolve that mess is to put the issue back to the people. You cannot see power. You cannot touch power. But in this street, you feel it profoundly when it has fallen away. And uh, Laura is with me now. Just thinking, Laura, having heard the Prime Minister here earlier, what did that statement tell us really about the kind of premiership that she's uh, experienced? Well, I suppose it gives evidence to the fact that her allies have said for a long time she cares deeply about what she's been trying to do. There's absolutely no question that she's somehow not trying. And it's true that she's put enormous personal effort and sacrifice into doing this job. It's also true that she inherited from David Cameron a country looking around wondering how to move on from the referendum, a Tory party that was even at that point intractably divided. But are there things along the way that Theresa May did that seemed like mistakes? Yes, there are. Are there ways in which she might have been able to make the situation better in Parliament rather than worse? Yes, there are too. Because people have talked for a long time about the determination that she displayed, but there is a point at which determination turns to stubbornness and stubbornness turns to an unwillingness to listen to anyone else. And she leaves tonight clearly having put a huge amount of effort into this job, clearly overwhelmed at least today by the challenges that, kept, that were in front of her. But she leaves to the country with the biggest political change we ever have, a change of prime minister within a couple of months.
We'll talk about that in a short while, Laura, who will be stepping in there by the end of July. But thanks for now. Laura Kingsburg there, our political editor. Well, as we know, there's been uh, no shortage of speculation over recent months about the next likely tenant of number 10. But Mrs May's announcement today did encourage uh, a much more open discussion now about the party's options and the qualities and the credentials of those with leadership ambitions. And our correspondent Ben Wright has been looking at the likely contenders. The job of picking the next Prime Minister is in the hands of Tory MPs and Conservative Party members. A contest that has already been brewing for weeks will kick off officially on Friday, June the 7th. The date Theresa May will stand down as Tory leader. Nominations begin the following week. Under the party's rules, Conservative MPs will whittle down the field of candidates through a series of votes until a final two remain. And those two candidates will then battle it out to win a vote of the Tory grassroots. Around 120,000 Conservative Party members who are largely male, middle class and have an average age of 57. So who might stand? Well, it's likely to be a very crowded field. Around 17 Tory MPs are considering a crack at number 10 and five have said that they'll definitely run, including Boris Johnson, the 54-year-old former Foreign Secretary, is the likely front runner. The figurehead of the Leave campaign is popular among the membership, but less admired by a chunk of Tory MPs who may try and thwart his path to number 10. Another Leave believer, Dominic Raab, is also likely to run, and the former Brexit secretary is popular on the right of the party. There's the Environment Secretary, Michael Gove, who backed Leave, but has stayed loyal to Mrs May. The Foreign Secretary, Jeremy Hunt, is going for it. He campaigned for Remain in the referendum, but has since stressed his commitment to Brexit, as has the Home Secretary, Sajid Javid. The Leave supporter and former Work and Pension Secretary, Esther McVeigh, says she is definitely running. And Andrea Leadsom, who stood against Theresa May last time before pulling out, may also try again. There will be more, many more, who go for it. A new Prime Minister will be in place by the time that Parliament breaks up for the summer recess in late July. But whoever goes through this door in a few weeks time will face the same challenges that Mrs May will soon leave behind. A deadlocked parliament, a Brexit deal the EU says is closed and a deeply divided country. That was uh, Ben Wright there. So the person who will move into number 10 in a couple of months' time will be chosen by members of the Conservative Party, around 120,000 of them, whose instincts on Brexit will no doubt be a, a key factor in the outcome. For a view on Mrs May's departure and uh, what lies ahead, our correspondent Alex Forsyth went to meet members of the Conservative Association at Reading University. Hitting younger voters has 